So, and Richard, great to have you here as well. Good to be here. Hello. Hello, hello. So, um, so I'll share my screen. Make sure I got the right screen here. Richard, we're not sure if you wear a watch or not. I do not wear a watch. It's completely pointless to do so because I have a phone. <laughs> Isn't there something about it's the speed thing? Like, I don't know. No, maybe. I generally have a really good sense of time because. All right. I, or I was going to say maybe the phone is attached to your wrist. <laughs> no. The only time I use a watch is when I'm running and I don't want to have my phone constantly out of my hand. And so I sometimes use a very small watch to do intervals. Oh, all right. Well, that's, yeah. that's more committed than I am when I run. So <laughs> hopefully your intervals have been good. Um, all right. So let's see. The first thing I think on the agenda was, did Claire just drop off? Uh, Claire just dropped off. So it She's was... back. Oh, okay. Claire, did you drop off for a second? Or did yes. I? No, I just don't know why. But Okay. Well, welcome back. Or, Thank you. <laughs> um, so I did put on the, the list here today, just kind of that first thing that you had with respect to a workshop, yeah. possibly in Bilbao. You want yes. To talk so, about that? so sorry now, and I, I, for some reason, everything is seeming to freeze on my computer. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the idea was, and uh, Richard knows about this too, we were planning the Sustain OSS Academic Working Group meetup be just because we're over in Bilbao and it would be nice to meet people. Um, and so uh, we booked a room that is in the hotel very close to the venue. So just after sessions close on Wednesday, we'll invite folks that are interested in academic, open source and academia to come along. But it just coincides with the Chaos Working Group. So I was kind of thinking that we could use it to, I mean, we're just going to have some finger food and say hello to people and things like that. But I thought we could use it to also um you know stream in the 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 working group while we're all there um and use it as an opportunity that if there are new people that we could introduce them to the model as well um so that was really my thought and if everyone is okay with that then we can we can i i've put up the the draft uh, or the 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 link to a registration page in the slack channel and we can share it wider if folks think that's a good idea seems sensible to me so if it especially if it coincides right with this working group time well, that was exactly it we wouldn't have to change that at all we just yeah it's on the big screen and get a you know huddle huddle around a, spe a speakerphone or a, spe a microphone to actually are you, gonna, are you doing anything in the session so no so there's nothing i mean there's, there's nothing scheduled this will be so that the in terms of the timing we'll just have the introduction so we know if people are there we'll go yeah. into the chaos session and then i think we'd probably talk about what people's priorities are because that will feed into the start the kickstart of the sustain academic working group that richard will be doing the following week Okay. Um, no, that sounds great. Do you, would you want, like, would you want me to have something kind of ready for that at all? Or I, I mean, I, I personally, I think we can introduce this as, you know, we're going to join this working group. It's a working okay. group. It's in the middle of the work, but, but it might be nice if there are new people there, which we're hoping there will be, um, just to start with perhaps, a, 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 a you know, an, an introduction, perhaps a little bit okay. of a, not assuming anyone knows any information to show them where we're at because they could be new participants in the future. Why don't I do that? You can count on me to to kind of do that. It'd be like thank you. Three, yeah, three, three I, fi minutes. I figure it's a it's 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 a it's something we we always do anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sounds great. Um, I did maybe it's great to have Richard on here as well. Could you kind of talk about the academic working group and the connections with maybe this working group and how you see it? Just. Not like, I'm just curious, like how we can work together best. I think I'm not trying to, anyway. No problem. Uh, so Sustain is kind of a weird agglomeration of multiple things anyway. It's kind of a loose network of people interested in talking about sustaining open source, right? Our only prerogative goal ultimatum is to like provide space for people to talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. So we've had working groups before, which is just a nice way of having thematic sessions where people can talk together. There's currently a few active working groups in Sustain. There's the Governance Working Group with Greg Loom and Javi. There's the UX Working Group, mainly front run by Errol. Um, and there's a couple of others that have sort of spun up and down over, over the years. The Academic Working Group has existed before. So the idea of Academic Working Group is let's focus on what happens with open source in academia. And this covers a whole ton of sins, right? So there's ed tech, there's research software like RESA, right? All those sort of thing, alt metrics. There's um, teaching students. 
how to do open source. And there's working with students, say the corporate connection that like Stephanie does, right? So all this sort of thing sort of falls under the brand of how do you do open source. There's also Ospos, which is a whole thing that I was doing with Oslo Plus Plus. Oslo Plus Plus was an organization, is an organization rather that focuses on how do you have open source program offices working together, but they're focused a lot more on universities and governments and nonprofits and for-profits, like all the things, right? Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. So over the course of my time facilitating sessions at Oswald Plus Plus, I realized actually I can't do five things at once. And it makes a whole lot more sense not to bother. Um, and so I sort of let the sustained academic working group kind of pass away because it would just be like, you just go to Oswald Plus Plus, right? But now, um, over the course of the past few years, I've realized that OSPOs are not the end all for open source work, which was obvious from the beginning, but um, is useful for me to have a container now where I focus not just on OSPOs, but in general on open source and academia. Mm -hmm. um, and you could also think of this as open work at RIT. That sort of stuff is very, very similar, right? Um, instead of having open source at RIT, they have open at RIT because it covers open data, open knowledge, open science, et cetera. And so the Sustained Academic Working Group is a working group that I'm restarting uh, on a monthly basis. And what's different is that I'm starting it with funding. So my time is just straight out covered from a grant from Sloan for the next year. And so I'm planning to have meetings once a month, similar to the Oswald Plus Plus group, where instead of having a less structured working group where people just come and I sort of say, what are you doing today, folks? It'll be more like we have a 20 minute presentation we have questions answered after, then we have any other business. Does anyone want to talk about anything? What would you like for the next meeting? Does anyone want to come talk about something? So structured meetings once a month, any other things that come out of that, we can sort of organize as well. I'm hoping to do like a podcast once a month on universities and open source. And so with that structure, we're hoping to sort of elevate the level of the conversation we're having around academia and open source, which is aligned with this group, which is focuses on, on the metrics right, for OSPOs in particular, but also just open source in general at universities. So that's why I think it's aligned and that's where we sit within the wider constellation of things. OSPO++ plus plus is just OSPOs, I, I just said it all, but yeah, that's where we're at. Does that make sense? Any questions? Uh, likely a lot of questions, but, cool. super, but, but super helpful. Um, When's your first meeting then? September 28th at 12 noon. I have an event for this. The issue is oh, I haven't really? decided yet how to publicize it. Do I set the Google group up now? Do I set it up later? Do I ask people if they want another Google group of Slack? There is a Slack and Open Collective, and there will be a post on the discourse forum. I just need to do that. Is it um, Eastern? 12 Eastern, the fourth Thursday of every single month. Okay. It's interesting. I'm trying to figure out that as overlapping with our um, symposium. Which we have yeah, ju years. just that month though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah just month. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So I'm trying to figure out, but we don't like we don't start until later. Like it's that's a nine o'clock start for, and then it's, we don't start till nine thirty. And I'm like, oh, do we somehow? I'm wondering so, if I can somehow integrate the. What I will say is that my plan is to announce and to work on um, the beginning of an ecosystem map. So over the past three years, I've continually had conversations with people who's like, cool, what is open source? I'm like, well, talk to these people, talk to these people, talk to these people. And I've realized that's just really redundant. Mm -hmm. And so what I've been having been worked on for the past, sometimes my syntax is horrible. Um, what I'm trying to work on now is providing a resource that people can continually add to that says, here are all the players in this space. Here's what Cross does. Here's what Chaos does. Here's the people you want to talk to. And that's what I'll be presenting at the December 28th meeting. Stephanie, if you want, I can just have a meeting with you beforehand to like show you the thing. And if you have any suggestions, that'd be great. Also, no, I, it'll be I, recorded. I also, but I guess what I was thinking was, oh, wow, I have some people in our symposium who'd be interested in that group. How do I have everybody do both? Throw them all at me. That would yeah, be dope. Fair. We're not going to use an event right for this. Oh, um, okay. This is just... But I, yeah, I can just show you that throw you the Zoom event or the Calendly event and that should be fine. So Richard, are you are you planning on producing anything from this yes. group? What are you planning on producing? Uh, whatever is necessary. Initially, I'm planning on producing this ecosystem map, which is going to be a GitHub okay. editable um, or Google Docs editable resource okay. for all the acronyms in this space. Okay, so like kind of all the work that's occurring in this space and creating a, a map of that. Is that correct? Yeah, map may be a weird word, landscape, 
Uh, I know those. You know, have you seen those, like, uh, the landscape maps that, like, Kubernetes does or CNCF? I know the ones that CNCF does. Yeah, Similar so. to that. What I wanted to do, though, is not have it come from LF, so it's not entirely oh, yeah. bound. That was yeah. just where my mind went on it. Yeah, no, that's that's what we're trying to do. I'm basically okay. I'm sick of saying the same things over and over and over again. So. Are you um are you intending to produce any like artifacts out of this group? As an example, like obviously in chaos, we produce metrics and they are yep. fundamentally, you know, like a markdown document. Like when it comes down to it, there's a thing at the end of the story. Do you plan on doing stuff like that? I plan on facilitating. Okay. Uh, the working group is what the working group wants and needs. If there are documents, that would be great. And I would like to actually have things to come out because I've realized that they have longer legs. Mm -hmm. So yes, is the answer. And it'll probably okay. end up being on the website, maybe on a GitHub repo, maybe in docs. Okay. But unsure at the moment as to what those things might be? or As the needs progress, probably guides. Okay. It's, it, the first thing will be the sequence of the map. The next one I have to figure out. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if, if there are, uh, things that you could talk to, do you know, Anna Jimenez at the to-do group? Very well. Yep. So, I mean, cause she also is really focused on producing like, um, like book chapters, yep. like different, you know, these kinds of artifacts or guides. When you mentioned guides, you know, these kinds of things that help people navigate the complex space and, um, have access to the things that they need to have access to because yeah. that landscape that you'll produce like clearly not every university will need all the things in that landscape they will pick the things that are relevant to them and helping people kind of navigate that as a guide as an example would I could see that as being extremely useful yeah I, I would love to do that and I would love to follow Anna's model she's incredibly prolific yeah. And um, very good at saying things in a simple way. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I, I'm leery of. I'm not saying that's a must. It was just what it was on the top of my mind. Like, listen. yeah, no. So I, one of the things I'm, I'm leery is the right word. Yeah. Informally cautious, worried, due to related suspicions. Well, yeah, um, leery. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm I'm worried about the possibility of making guides before it's necessary because oh, I'm sick course. of doing that. And that happens a lot in this space. I'd rather have, like, if people need help, then, like, yes, we can make that for you. Well, int um, yeah, interesting yeah. that you say that because right now in – sorry sorry for all this conversation, it's no, a no. conversation, but right now in the Chaos Project, we have different context groups that are taking a look at how metrics are applicable in their yeah. different contexts. And for example, the corporate OSPO is one of those contexts. And we are working with the to-do group, you know, kind of having a conversation there. Um, the group that you're with right now is, is kind of asking similar questions, but it's been interesting in this group because we've spent more time, I would say, on this framework that I'll talk about today, which is kind of just helping map the space first before we really get into the metrics and the metrics models. Like what are the things that we care about Yep. in this space. And I, I think that my guess is that corporations um, have this a little bit more figured out just because they've been doing this for 10 years, this this meeting engagement with open source from a very deliberate kind of approach. Um, so I think we can, we're can we getting a little bit faster to the metrics questions in the corporate space than we are here, not good or bad. I just, so we've spent more time kind of mapping and I agree with you like on, on guides. And so like, we don't want to guide people when we don't even really know what the landscape is totally comprised of um, and trying to stitch those things together before it's abundantly clear. So I think corporate metrics are easier because they have a bottom line. They are university they metrics are a lot harder because the bottom line is often in relation to your dean or relation to your employer or like, like where, where the money is coming from in the university. I, um, I think the data is harder too in a university yep. setting. So as one of the things I do kind of want to talk about today, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, this is super helpful. Um, I will plan on attending those meetings. That would be dope. And again, yeah. it's not me producing, it's me facilitating the production of, um, because me producing stuff only gets us so far. Okay. Um, do you, um, and you're including scientific software in this as well? 
that seems related to open source and academia. Yeah. I know it's so it's, but like we have, we also have a, cause we have a scientific context group, which is folks that aren't necessarily in a university setting. Yep. So like NumPy. Yep. That's why I say academic. I don't say university or college. Okay. Just, yeah. So it's, it's, and in terms of like, am I including, uh, Sustain, everyone is welcome at Sustain. We're super non-hierarchical, acephalous, uh, big tent, open source. Okay. Um, and in terms of the ecosystem map, uh, right now it's a spreadsheet and it may stay that way because it seems to be really, really useful. If, mm -hmm. if someone wants to throw a package in there, we'll make a sheet called scientific packages. If someone wants to throw a university in there, there's already one for that. You know, it's like, it's less about having a... Um, a fate accompli and much more like this is a starting point if you don't see it add it but this okay. should help you know who's working in the space okay no that's helpful okay thank you thank you for that um if you have a, a link that you want to share you could put it in the minutes or the chat here that might help people uh yeah i can do that give me give me a give me five minutes and i'll have a better link for you okay that sounds great thank you um so and thank you claire for <laughs> opening this discussion <laughs> It was really helpful. Um, and I, Do you I mind if I ask um, this? Is any of that confusing? To, I, I know the vast majority of you. So is any of that confusing to you? And to Yiga or, or Jen, is that confusing to you? Do you have any questions? Mike, Stephanie, I hope I haven't just totally shocked you with anything. I think we talked about this in Portland. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> cool. <laughs> And the okay. Zoom will end up in that. Involved. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Sorry, I was just going back to the whole Zoom link thing. It'll it'll show up in the Slack channel. Like if we're already in the Slack channel, the Zoom link yep. will magically appear. Okay, great. Yep, you're good. Don't worry about it. All right. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. No, this is great. Thank you. Um, and honestly, too, I just kind of kind of coming from the chaos perspective. The more we can work together, as I've always. The, the better for <laughs> like everything, everything. Let's let's do this together. Um, before I get to the framework, and I'd like to have a little bit of discussion about that as well. Um, Leslie Hawthorne, this next point, had put that she has a friend who's looking for support on some grant applications uh, to work with uh, LMIC governments and opportunities for sustainability. I'm guessing this, I think if I went to the to the Slack message, um, they're going to be submitting to the Sloan, Ford, Odemeyer, you know, the infant, the the one that I'm pretty sure we're all probably pretty aware of. <laughs> that um, as it sounds like everybody is submitting to <laughs> come, come shortly. Um, so if you know anybody that's interested, I know that Leslie has been connected with uh, Anita here in the chaos project who is looking to help as well. So just if you have an interest or know of somebody that might have an interest in this, um, please reach out to me or it's on, I think it's on general or even in this channel. All right. So one of the things I, I would like to return to um, is, is this, and uh, again, I'm kind of looking at you, Richard, like, I don't know if you've seen this and it's not that I'm asking you to, to necessarily just soak it all in immediately and understand everything that's going on. Um, but what, what we've been doing in this group is trying to identify um, activities or what we, I guess, also call functions within a university where open source might play a role. And, and we're trying to build a, a framework of these functions so that we can start locating um, metrics that could help provide insight around these particular functions. And one of the things I'm thinking when you were talking about with sustain is having a larger group of people think through what the particular functions at a university you might care about with respect to these functions might be really helpful. And so the way that this reads, and this group has been amazing in helping put this together so far. So thanks everybody for that. And I was gonna drill down a little bit in one of them is that we have these, these top functions across here with excellence, translation, education, and really community. And so these are, these are places where the university might care how open source is playing a role. Um, completely subject to, to change, that's fine. Um, I don't think we're 
heavily set on any of these terms. Um, it can get smaller, it can get wider. That's completely fine. The Down here, these boxes are goals within each one of these functions. So there may be a goal of identifying curriculum that uses open source at the university. That would be an education goal. Or to provide another goal may be to provide training and mentorship in open source uh, for faculty, staff, and students, for example. So one of the things that I, and then from there, we can kind of focus in on saying, correlating open source activity with research funding. And we can take a look at, at what particular questions might help inform that particular goal. So in this case, which funded university projects are using, contributing to, or maintaining open source? What funding agencies are supporting uh, university open source work? And what funding agencies have programs supporting open source work? So we're just trying to get our our like some understanding of of how research funding and open source are brought together at a university. Everybody okay with this as a example? We've been through this many many times. And Richard, I don't know if this makes sense to you. So one of the things that might be really interesting when we do talk in sustain, not to overtake that conversation, but like what are from people's different perspectives are these particular functions at at a university are these is this a, the right set of functions that you would care about open source as related to at a university and would these be a good set of goals to to particularly focus on so that might be something we could talk about in the sustain the sustain group as we move forward just to kind of see if these these relate um, all right, so one of the things that I did want to talk about a little bit today to get some feedback on from people is if, if we wanted to answer these questions, and this is not a perfect set of questions, this is a set of questions that can help move us forward positively on that goal. All right, so there may be seven questions, there may be 20 questions, but it's these three that we've kind of talked through in this group that would, again, move us forward positively on this goal. So now we're kind of at the stage of what would be the metrics and metrics models that could help inform each one of these questions to gain insight on these questions. So if I was to take a look at this first question, which is which funded university projects are using, contributing to, or maintaining open source? Like, this is this data thing that I think was alluded to earlier in this meeting. Like if 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 we were going to answer this question or try to answer this question at a university, like assuming we could get perfect data and answer that question, I think everybody would be happy. But where would we even get data to begin to answer a question like this? And if it's, yeah, Mike. Yeah, I heard. So I talked to Karthik about this a while back. He had something where he was mining databases of published papers for mentions of like software repositories and stuff. Uh, which I think with is the a collaborator on that. Yeah, um, which I think is a very slick idea, um, especially given that it's connected to publications, which is already like this sort of de facto thing. Is it was it James Howison that he was working with? Do you know? I think it was a Spaniard. I'm trying to look for the name. Okay. Now. Okay. Um, and so this is, do you know if the database, this is published data? Is that what it is? No, I think it's something where they kind of like, they, they would, yeah, Richard, Richard. It is James Howison. It's James Howison and Patrice Lopez. They're okay. working together. So basically they're mining all uh, public literature that's in like Zenodo for any links to any open source repositories or packages, and then using that to build a graph of open source usage. Um, thank you, Mike. That's a that's exactly the cool do you have a link. Do you have a link for that? Uh, looking for it now. And could you put it in this slide deck maybe? Yeah. Is that the UT Austin guy, James yes. Howison? Cool. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I know of him. I've never met him before. And actually, the link is science-minor.com, and this is the one that Karthik was referencing. There are other attempts to have done this in the past for the past like 15 years. In fact, yeah. this is one of the ways I got into open source was trying to do this with MIT. The project called Google. Right? Science dash minor. Yes, you did. So that's that's a really cool way of doing it. That's one way. I will take a look at that. We're also trying to create that. I think I mentioned it before. The the um, repo browser for that, and that's that's internal to you know individual campuses uh, at, at UC, where. Um, and we're working with Gay Oregon. Or we're trying to get funding so that we can work with Gay Org on it um, to create a more refined methodology for that. So it's not just like a bunch of data, data um, that we don't really understand what what it means, whether the repo is actually usable or not. Or uh, but the idea is that if we can refine that information, you get like you know you see how many people in the university are have a GitHub or a Git repo. But what does that mean? And and being able to refine what it means is kind of the next step. Um, and this all started, I think I mentioned it before, but we started with UCSD, so San Diego, um, try, tried this, just one of the researchers in the library tried this, uh, just on like really kind of clunky way, but, you know, a methodology, and he found like 30,000 or something, some ridiculously high number. And and even if only like one or two one you know, ten percent of that is actually usable or or have has some you know value, um, uh, that was still a significant amount from the leadership's perspective. Okay, so like got them interested. It suddenly got UCSD interested in the whole thing. Is this um, available? Repo we're working, we have we're working on. Um, I, I I you know I, I can link to the I think I can link to something that you see. I I have to find it. It's in my. That that Adam at UCSD did, um, and then um, Carlos and I have been working to try and get this kind of more of a UC wide thing. We did a little bit of it at UCSD as kind of a tester, but we we okay. really do this in a little bit more, and we want to do it more of a me method, you know, okay. way. Um, and we also have been working with the as a kind of another way is working with Office of Research and you know basically our sponsored projects folks to add somehow add in or have them have a search mechanism within their uh, grant writing that actually identifies when someone is talking about using open source within their grants. And that's, um, those are those are the two that we have been looking at doing. We haven't gotten very far in the actual implementation, but we are working to kind of figure out the best methodology with that. Is that part of a submission process? The first one is the repo browser is, uh, technically the other one is, kind of part of our current grant, but we just haven't been able to get with, you know, mesh with OSP yet to get it figured out. But would it be like faculty or people submitting grants? Or oh, oh sorry. Yes. yes, I'm sorry. I, I missed okay. what you meant. Yes. Okay. Um, it would be, we would, yeah, I mean, I think the idea now is the easier way within our, within the UCSC grant writing and grant system is to do it on the intake. Okay. Um, and then we can, then you can cross check it with what it actually got. I got okay. Uh, yeah, Richard. But I, different systems, yeah. I think different systems would have to, like some, some schools would definitely find it probably easier to do it on the, okay. in the, at the after funding. Um, yeah, I gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah, Richard. Um, so I, I have a couple of things on this. Um, I want to start with, I added some comments in the chat that I don't know will be in the recording. Thank you. Where at, at the top at 1224, where I pointed out other major functions, which are related to a university in open source context or open source in university context, such as ed tech um, or a university mandate is being part of like the world of what a university needs to do. That's also relevant. Um, so right. it's not just the stuff that a university does, but what they should do is related to open source or policy. For instance, how we think about legal stuff for open source. Yep. And I bring this up now because when we're talking about what funded university projects are using, contributing to, and maintaining open source software, you have to think about what you mean by funded university projects and what you mean by use and maintaining. So a good example might be the dependency tree, right? 
if any university computer related to a university, if anyone in the administration, if anyone who's a researcher, if anyone who's applying to the university, if anyone who's a student is using a Linux distribution anywhere in the in the stack, that could count as they are using open source. Mm -hmm. And that's way too broad because that's every single person in the university at some point somewhere in the, in the stack is using open source, right? Anyone who accesses a web browser is using open source because that depends upon open protocols. And so I feel like you need to break this down a lot, a lot more into where you want us to focus. Because um, contributing to open source is a whole lot easier. Using something like Stephanie suggested is really, it makes sense. Using science minor works for publications. But when we think about the university as a whole, I'm still kind of unclear as to what segment you want to look into. I'm so it's not just, it's, no, 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 it's not just me. It's all of us. You meaning <laughs> this, these are... These are collectively developed documents. So um, do people have thoughts on, on Richard's comment? I mean, we can reduce the size of this question. I agree that having questions that are overloaded sometimes <laughs> creates three questions in one question. Um, we can remove use pretty easily at this point in the conversation without any real expense downstream for us. Yeah, Claire. Yeah, I, I had that was my comment earlier about the three questions of one, but but I think that usage scenario from the creating contribution scenario are, is very different. Like it, it seems to, it seems to come up in very different scenarios. Okay. Um, in, in that would that would just be a piece of feedback. So perhaps in this instance, it it would be um, cer certainly the 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 concern that I suppose correlating it particularly with research funding to the best of my knowledge is is very clearly around the creation and the the contribution to as it pertains to impact how you're sharing this what your plans are to make it fair research and all that sort of thing it's about an output um uh though in saying that there can sometimes be how are you building on other people's work right so then that then that does become something that would be, but they are separate things. It would, I suppose, is my is my ultimate thought process here. Yeah, Richard. I agree that they're separate. I'm trying to think of a way of doing it more usefully. And I wonder if it would make sense to break down who are the different stakeholders involved with universities and then ask this question for each of them. Um, so multiple questions of, which blank are we contributing to in open source? And so we think of the stakeholders, we think of like the students, the researchers, and the institution itself, like the staff. Um, and then we could ask for each of those, which open source project are the staff using? Which are the, are the staff maintaining, right? So the staff might be working on something like EduLearn or EduRome or anything run by Aperio, right, to run the classes. Whereas if you're asking what students are using, they could also be using browsers, they could be using um, tools in their workflows as students. And it's just very, very different questions, like answers, depending upon where you're focusing. So I feel like breaking down all of the different stakeholders that are part of a university might be a way of getting at answering this question in the first place, just by scoping it a bit more. Um, so, yeah, so help help us out here. So what do you, in terms of the question? So, so when you think about the, the open source university functions, we need to stop thinking about a university as a coherent whole. It isn't. We need to start thinking of the university as being composed of multiple different types of stakeholders. Uh, and maybe that's the wrong word because stakeholder sounds weird. But like when I think about a company, right? A company has multiple inputs to open source. There's the inner source side, how people work together on open source and how that affects the actual work that they're doing. There's the infrastructure side, how they depend upon open source in order to do the work that they do coding wise. And then there's the customers and then there's the adjacent customers. Uh, when we think about, you want to think about people who use open source who could be customers, but aren't yet, right? So those are like three massively different stakeholders for how you think about um, corporate open source. For universities, I think staff, researchers, and students might be a really good way of breaking it down. And then there's probably going to be a fourth one. Um, and I don't know what that would look like. Collaborators, um, which would influence this. Right. So typically, this conversation has has really started from the university OSPO position. So folks that are kind of standing in in these OSPOs that have been funded largely through through Sloan, and in particular, like the the next round of funding, the six OSPOs that are kind of joining. So it's it's usually this conversation has been 
been from that context. So I see where it's coming from. There's an issue of what the OSPO is because OSPOs are in different places, right? Whether it's libraries has a different meaning than whether it's in the the computer science thing. So we all know that. But still when thinking about what the OSPO actually has scope to do, an OSPO has some scope to influence the curriculum with students and has some scope with researchers, some ability to deal with researchers. But again, they can't make demands of researchers, right? And it has some influence with the administration, but they can't make demands of the administration. And so like every single time you ask any question, you have to decide who am I talking to here and how do I want to get the metrics in? Um, I, mean, I really wish that was more coherent. And maybe you've already done all this work and I'm just raising the same stuff over and over again. No, no, no. Um, I mean, agreed. And nowhere at this point is this meant to necessarily um, make demands on anybody. It's meant to be, say, as an example, like if an RPT process changes inside of a university, like how can, in this case, the OSPO be responsive to support that process? Not how would the OSPO change the RPT process, but if it was to change beyond beyond something that occurs in the OSPO, how can support be done? And so that's really- I'm unfamiliar with the term RPT, I'm sorry. A, a review, tenure, and promotion. Thank you. So like, yep, so if that was to change in a university, not that this group would change it, but how can this group be present to support and provide insight around the things that might be part of that tenure and promotion process. Yeah, Claire. Yeah, so I I was just thinking more again about what Richard was saying about that audience lens. And I think, you know, even as we came at this with the original conversation, which did come out from the OSPO thing, but I think we agreed earlier that this is broader than that in terms of looking at metrics for folks that may not have OSPOs, for example, it's, it's still relevant. Even at that, we, we we at that time were talking about three different areas. There was the research area. And the reason why I'm kind of pointing this out now is as I'm looking at your map now, your functions, like three of those relate to that research area, I think, in, 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 in many respects. Then there was the education area, which is very, very different to, to Richard's point. But even in the education area, there's the student perspective, there's the lecturer perspective, and then there may be other perspectives as well. Um, and then there was indeed that that kind of internal IT for the university, which is not covered here at all, um, actually, in this list, because even in that initial conversation we had, that was there. And, and we know that some OSPOs, in fact, are involved in building infrastructure for their internal IT systems to basically be able to do research software creation more efficiently. But it's like it's an IT function. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, and, and in that particular instance, there there probably are a whole load of different function goal question metric mm-hmm. things that you, you would you would consider and because for example their goal would be how many people are using my infrastructure like to, to do this as opposed to anything else and um, so I, I like even as I'm looking at this if if I do reflect on the audience lens that Richard was talking about what the, the, what I got from from Richard's comment if like the research excellence is definitely one piece, the research translation is definitely, you know, these are all things that research functions care about and the distribution and community seems to be another thing that they particularly care about. And then the education one might be a separate one. So, so I'm just wondering now if, if these functions can be further, I suppose, be more particular and also be more complete by breaking them out by those three functions. And maybe that would also allow Richard to, on each of those functions, then talk about potentially those different stakeholders if if, if we're missing some, because even as we're having this discussion, we're sure. missing some that we talked about in the very early days. And of course, because these were all relevant, we haven't talk, gone back to reflect on, on, on those since maybe, but but, yeah. but they are, we are missing some. No, that's nice. Um, so is this the suggestion that I'm hearing you kind of talk about Claire, is trying to bring together functions that might be relevant, for example, in a research context? Well, that would be one. One, Um, exactly. And then then functions that would be relevant in an education context, as an exam, just using the words here. Functions that would be relative uh, or related in, say, the IT infrastructure perspective, whatever those whatever those might be. Okay. Gen- no, general that... infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. No, I gotcha. So, um, your institution infrastructure. Kind yep. of, and, and of course that's where the usage comes in a lot more as well, because they, 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 they'd obviously want to be 
they, they may have a bigger emphasis on that in a different way than usage for students, than usage for researchers. To Richard's yep. point, usage means very different in those contexts. Yep, no, that's that's great. And so- and, and, and indeed, contribution means very different. Like your goal around contribution would be very different in those three contexts, right? Like Sure, I mean, oh, yes, of course. Um, just thinking about contribution from a research perspective versus a student perspective. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, contribution from a student perspective is almost becoming like a, a resume, a resume builder kind of thing. Um, yeah, okay, and, so... and, and you might you mightn't put a lot of effort into you know, kind of thinking about social impact of that. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe 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 you would, maybe you'd be optimistic. But <laughs> that's interesting. So, um, so per the earlier point of this diagram, can get wider and deeper. I think it just did get wider and deeper, which is good. Um, it gets a little bit deeper in the sense that I think there will be, like, pardon my, but like a, a, a box now that kind of brings together, if I can move this to the back. Mm. Oops. Things are always so much simpler when I'm doing things not in front of everybody. Anywho, oh, there we go. Let me move that to the back order. Mike oh. and Stephanie, does that sound helpful? Yeah, I mean, the, I mean that is also yeah. I know. I I think the way that the that was described actually is pretty helpful. I, and it is something that we have been trying to. I mean, I personally have been trying to kind of get my head around about the the ways of dealing the whole idea of the different like how different stakeholders kind of fit into how to this I think is actually um a pretty good area to have a, to, to to have more clarity on cool. what do you think Mike okay so um I think it'll make the it'll add some complexity to this figure that's okay um Richard. I mean, like, do, is it like this the fourth place? I mean, is that like it's almost like this figure, and then maybe you breaking it to different. I, There's two options. One is it it could be like not just creating a larger figure. It could be like, um, yeah, like that. Yeah. As simple as that, and just saying these are the three areas, at least of interest. Again, these are not these will never be perfect. We can never solve everything, but. Um, and then creating another set of um, another set of functions around education, another set of functions around infrastructure, and so on and so forth. Yeah, Richard. I think that'll be really helpful because it'll also help answer some of the questions that we've been we've been asking. So when we think about just research, mm -hmm. Ressa is already on this. They have answers to like how to do this, and we can ask them and collaborate with them a whole lot easier. When we're okay. thinking about uh, infrastructure at the university in terms of running the university, we can talk to Aperio about that. They already have answers on that. And therefore, it like, makes it easier for us to work. When we talk about teaching students, there's like a very small subset of researchers, like maybe like 10 to 20, that will have answers and would love to be part of that conversation, but can't really contribute to the research publication in the same way. I'm yeah. thinking people like Stephen Wally, right? And that just would be really, really helpful because then it, uh, it just narrows down, okay, this sort of lens. Um, yep. No, this is great. Um, and so the list that you have here. Those I were other things that I feel like weren't included in the university context of what is open source at a university. I was trying to like add on to that because I just didn't see those included in there. Some of them maybe were like mandate may be part of translation, right? I see. So like some of these might be higher level structures like infrastructure as was just talked about here. Some might, so these aren't all at the same level. They're not at the same level, right? Okay. Um, and infrastructure is one of those weird ones where it's like, it could be defined for each different stakeholder, right? Yeah. What's the infrastructure needed for a student versus versus a researcher versus for the university website versus the runnings of the university. Um, but I just didn't really see, like policy was something that wasn't included at all. And that relates to open source. It's just a meta open source thing, right? How do you think about open source as a, as a study field? Yep. Okay, well, this is good. Um, so it sounds like what, before the next meeting, what I'll do is try to rework these a little bit, which I 100% don't mind doing. So I 
it's great. Um, because this is this is how we can get to the path of what ultimately what metrics are useful to answer questions that are relevant to these particular functions. Like we have to follow this whole path. And I'm really glad that you're all providing feedback because as we talked about a long time ago, metrics for metrics sake is no good for anybody. If we just start tossing out like metrics, we don't know where to place them and how they might help a conversation. So thank you for this. And to your point also, Richard, the more we can connect with folks that are in these, not smaller, but like more, more discrete domains that think about these particular things on a daily basis, that would also be extremely helpful. Yeah. It's also not to add another level of complexity. No more it's, levels. I'm of really complexity. sorry. Don't um, stop. And then. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds, it sounded to me like the messaging that you had was around these are useful metrics for us to have because they're metrics that are necessary for a university OSPO to ask. And that's a great start. They provide insight to these particular things. But an OSPO is not necessarily the only person who needs to have metrics in a university context. Yeah, and um, we have we backed off of that OSPO, as Claire had pointed out, that right. more towards a university because, as was pointed out, not everybody even has an OSPO, but they're asking questions around open source. A university is not the only example of a starting place. So... I've been wondering a lot more recently, like for every single researcher working at using open source tooling, they also need to ask these questions about their stack. And that's still a university research context, but it's not necessarily a coordinated one coming from the university. Does that make sense? It does. I think at some, yeah, it does. At some point we have to scope it. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we do, exactly. That's it. It's a okay. it's, <laughs> yes. We are at the end of time. Um, so really a great discussion, everybody. One day this framework will <laughs> will settle, um, which will be awesome. And and I, I really do believe that through this work, we're we're gonna make some really positive impacts. And now I think with this this other group, I think we can really start kind of drive this forward. So thanks for all of your feedback, everybody. And so in two weeks, we're not gonna meet okay. like in this regard because we're gonna be in Bilbao or folks are gonna be in Bilbao. Is that right? That's two weeks from okay. today. Oh, so my 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 thought was people are going to be online and I was just going to get everyone in Bilbao to be kind of like hybrid participants so that one of these little windows would be a group of people eating pinchos in Bilbao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I'll be, I'll be in one of the windows. I'm not ah, going to be Very good. Oh, you're not coming to be in Bilbao. So yeah, so, so we are no. half of this meeting, same time. Yes, same time, but it'll just, it'll take on a vastly different form. <laughs> so. I actually, I actually am uh, at the, the TOS, the Texas Open Source symposium that uh, or i'm participating in that yeah. so i that overlaps this so i won't be able to be here at all okay time, so. no problem we'll enjoy that um all right can, can i just ask one quick question just in terms of so i know you had said before about like people putting in questions but if we're not sure if they're really valid questions like should we just put them in as comments should we just like note them somewhere in the slide what's the best way the questions here yes um no just add them just, we'll, just sort, we'll, we'll sort them out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So just and I will try to get the ones I promised last week, uh, last okay. time on here. Before the next okay. Week. Great. Everybody, till next okay. time. Have Thank a wonderful you. rest of the day. Thank you. Talk to y'all later. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks.